what's the difference between what you did at JGR, what is happening at RCR, and how you can interact with the team and the things that you do uh, with RCR that are different than JGR? Because I think you bring a lot to the table. Yeah, I think both organizations are obviously different. They have their different ways and their different tendencies of things and what they do. Um, I would say, what's the difference between me and what I'm doing? Um, you know, when I joined JGR, I was off of three years of being with Hendrick. So seeing Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson and the success that they were having, I was jealous. Like I was only winning once or twice a year. They were winning six to 10 times a year. And it was like, what am I doing wrong? Why can't I be like those guys right now in my yeah. first three years of cup racing? Um, so I kind of took a back seat at JGR and was just kind of like, floating around, listening, like doing all that, even though we were successful winning races with all the different crew chiefs that I had over there. Um, we're now moving over to, to RCR, being in the sport for 20 years, going on 20 years. Um, I feel like I have a good sense of direction of what needs to happen, what should take place, how things could be structured and organized and all of that. Also from owning a race team, right? From having right. KBM for 12 years that we had that going. So there's a lot of that happening kind of behind the scenes. Um, I would say still, though, at the racetrack, wanting to be that same guy, wanting to go out there and win and compete and, and do it at the best of my ability and the best of the team's ability. And fortunately, we were able to win three races at RCR in my first year, which was great. Um, definitely cooled off towards the end of the year. So we want to fix that and not let that happen again. So I've changed teams and I've been a part of new things. And I know that everybody gets excited about that change when they go into a team and you you have all this enthusiasm and emotion. And, and sometimes it's hard to, to carry that through the year. So you, you won a few races at, at the beginning of last year. And, and like you said, kind of tapered off at the end. Do you think that was something that you guys just didn't keep up with the progression? Or what, what do you need to do to keep that first six months into the, into the last part of the season? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, joining RCR, I was excited about it because of the new car and the success that they had with Reddick the year before. They had won races. And so... Um, we kind of carried into that and we were able to be fast right out of the gate, winning at Fontana, Talladega, we won, right? But it's Talladega. Yeah. And then, uh, we obviously were really good at gateway. We were able to win there as well. So to me, why did we cool off? I, I think a little bit was just, I think the rest of the teams kind of caught up. Um, I think there were some things that we were doing, um, behind the scenes that NASCAR got onto that then typical, you know, Happens typical, every right? Year. Yeah. You know, hey, don't bring that back or, That's hey, right. we don't like what you're doing there. We're going to keep an eye on that. And so just stuff like that. So we kind of lost in that and we didn't really find any other advantages that we could re-step up, if you will. Um, but that's no excuse. I mean, there were some good runs that we had late in the year. Michigan, we were really fast. I crashed under Blaney. And then Texas, we were really fast. We drove up towards the front of the field on that one. And then I spun out getting into one on my own, you know, so just dumb stuff happening that kind of took us out with some pretty good cars has richard put his arm around you yet and said take what this car will give you no but i've said it enough on my own okay. that i know so he must not have put his arm around me because he hears me saying it so yeah. he knows i know um but it's it's yes i i can see that as a, as a moment in which could come but i think richard has enough respect for me that i've been here for so long been successful in what i've done that I don't know if he's just letting me learn on my own, which you would think I don't need to learn anymore. But with these new cars, they're just different. I, I think I think one thing for me that was always intriguing about RCR and, and the times that I was there and the things that I loved about RCR were how involved Richard actually lets you get in everything. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that, and I still tell people today, Richard is the best teacher that you could possibly have in NASCAR because... He teaches you about relationships. He has the he can pick up the phone and call anybody in the sport. He doesn't want to overspend. He doesn't want to crash, but he will allow you to crash if you're going to win. Yeah. And and the the he is going to fight for you to the very end. Yeah. As as his driver. So well, I remember those years in being in the 18 car and us racing against each other and things like that. And years where you weren't the best team or the best car or whatever, or won a lot of races, but you were there at the end all the right. time, you know, finishing that's fourth, him. finishing that's seventh, his finishing 12th, just finishing, you know? And so my MO is kill all the time. Yeah. Go win, 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 you know, and settling for a 10th or an 11th or whatever is just not my MJ, my MO. And it's hard for me to take that step back. What is your take on 
you, you said you won at Talladega. I know the Speedway races are, are places that, you, that you've won in the past. And as we go into, you know, the Daytona 500, and, and you saw the preparation that, that Richard and RCR put into the Daytona 500. For me, it was always something that was way over the top for, for one particular race. But the Speedway races in general, you, you talk about winning at Talladega and and I think as as you as you've gone through your first year at RCR, did did you see that extra preparation still at RCR for the Super Speedway races? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Last year, yeah, they there there was a a big push on the Speedway cars, obviously, and being good. And you want to go down there and you want to qualify well, you know. But qualifying, we know, doesn't really matter unless you're on the front row. Um, but there was still the you know, we were in the wind tunnel. We had a, a wind tunnel test. That's all limited this day and age. But we did take one of our wind tunnel tests for the Daytona car and we ran it through and just the fluff and buff and the, everything that was going into that car. And that car was was good. Like it was fast. That first car that I had and then I got crashed in the duel oh, yeah. and got set back, you know, to, to the backup car. So they you, there is a reason why there's a primary car and a backup car, right? Yeah. And so um, the backup wasn't quite as good, but it was still good. And we almost won. We we actually did win mile marker 500, but it was under yellow. So, um, yeah, just a lot of preparation and everything goes into the Daytona 500. I would imagine from every team, but um, with Richard and and what that means for him and Team Chevy and everybody there, they they put a lot to it. So when you when you look at the Daytona 500 and and you see the way that you have to race with this particular car. It's a different style of racing. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of two lane bumping and shoving. And um, what do you think about all the, the team racing? I call it team racing with the, with the manufacturer manufacturer racing. Yeah. And, and you mentioned it with, with Toyota, obviously that started uh, several years ago with yeah. probably more with Ford than it did with anybody else. Toyota had a small amount of cars, so, I mean, when do you pull that trigger now, being through what you've been through and, and knowing that you have to put yourself in that last stop? There, there is a lot of pressure from the manufacturers. What do you, what do you think about? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you go into these pre-race meetings and you hear about helping each other and, and taking care of each other and, and trying to leave a gap and let the guy in if he's hung out to dry or whatever, all this stuff, you know. But when it comes down to the end, it, like the question at JGR was always like, OK, when are we allowed to just race it out? Right. And was it 10 to go? Was it five to go? Was it on the final restart? Well, how do you know when the final restart is? So there was just so many unknowns or misconceptions of the rule that we had there. Um, but last year, I, I give credit where credit's due with Austin. I mean, he was wingman the whole way through, yeah, through good. and through. He was going to be wingman, you know. So um, he was doing everything and anything possible to make sure that the eight car was out front leading the race. And we were in a prime position to be able to, to win that thing and finish one, two. And um, they just, you know, caution come out, it just didn't happen. I think we were 200 yards from the start finish line and taking the white flag and Man, it just didn't happen. So close. When you went to RCR, I think through the years, there's been a lot of talk of oh, everybody hates Kyle. Nobody likes this. Nobody likes that. They don't like this. And then you go to RCR and that, that seems to change a little bit, I think, from the from the fan side. I think as you've matured and, and things have changed and, and gone through your career and been so successful. But does it feel different now that you're at RCR compared to when you were at Gibbs? Or um, yes, I, yes, it does feel different for sure. I would say that there was probably more pressure put on myself from the fact of, okay, I'm at JGR. So one of the top tier teams of our sport, um, arguably the best. And so there's that pressure to go out there and win and do well and execute and do everything that you need to do. And so when you don't do those things or you do finish second, it's like you're giving away missed opportunities of scoring wins because it you should win. Right. You know, and that changed a little bit going to RCR because, you know, being with the racers racer at RCR, all those guys that are there, everybody that works there from top to bottom, you know, they they love racing. They want to go race and they want to win. And I do, too. Um, but I feel like we're not really expected to be the dominant force in mm -hmm. the series. Um, and so on those days where I run sixth or I run second, it's a little bit more acceptable maybe because I'm not putting as much pressure on myself that I have to win right. and prove that that stuff is the best stuff, you know? So taking those, those wins when they come is more special. You know, I feel like Fontana, for instance, I was like, damn, man, we just beat all these guys in my second race out. We're going to win 10 times this year, you know? So, um, but it, it put me right back in that frame of mind of like, 
anywhere you go, you can get the job done. It's just the nature of everybody around you and pulling the weight the same way. Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.